Este pasado 5 de junio se cumplieron tres siglos del nacimiento de Adam Smith, filósofo y economista escocés, un hombre que de hecho ha sido considerado como el padre de la economía moderna. Yo quiero agradecer la presencia en este programa a la distancia desde la ciudad de Londres de Eamon Butler, él es economista británico, fundador y director del Instituto Adam Smith del Reino Unido, es autor de 27 libros, entre ellos Economía Austriaca, Una Cartilla, El Fin del Estado de Bienestar, tiene también libros sobre Hayek, Mrs. Friedman, Adam Smith y Anne, Anne Rand. Uh, quiero eh, agradecerle a Eamon Butler eh, la presencia en este programa. Vamos a estar conduciendo esta entrevista en inglés. Mr. Butler, thank you very much for speaking with us. Why is Adam Smith important? Why an economist that was born three centuries ago continues to be relevant? Because his ideas are so strong. Uh, he was really the, the father of uh, economics. Uh, he turned economics into something which is recognizably modern. Um, he talked about the mutual benefits of free trade. He talks about the benefits of specialization. He invented the, uh, the, the idea of gross national product, all these things that we still use today. So certainly as an economist, he's uh, uh, very important and his ideas are, are important, not just to economists, but to um, people in the political sphere as well. That uh, He believed in a, a market economy as being the best way to advance society and in particular to advance the, the um, situation of the poorest. Some, some believe that there is a contradiction between the Adam Smith of the theory of moral sentiments and the, the, and the Adam Smith of the wealth of nations. Is there really a contradiction? No, I don't think so. I, I, think, I think it's a mistake to regard Adam Smith as either an economist or um, a philosopher, a moral philosopher. He did write that famous book, The Theory of Moral Sentiments. And in fact, that was the book which made him famous um, and it made him rich. Uh, and it was uh, only years later that, that he published The Wealth of Nations, his big economics text. But I think what you've got to realize is that Smith was, if you like, a, a social psychologist. He, he looked at the different parts of the human mind. And he wrote about uh, ethics, yes. He wrote about uh, economics. Uh, and he wrote about arts and culture and uh, the use of language. Um, and he wrote about politics and justice. Uh, he, he really, I, I think, was trying to, to get to grips with what is it that makes human beings tick and, and what is it that makes their society work. So I really view him as a, uh, a human social psychologist rather than trying to put him into any one of these single categories. On the one hand, Smith uh, claims that we human beings cannot be oblivious to the uh, welfare or to the suffering of other human beings. And at the same time, he, he says that uh, if we want to be best served by a carpenter, by a butcher, it's better that we actually trust the self-interest of, of the butcher, the carpenter, or whoever provides us with a service or a product. Uh, how can it be that that we human beings are so generous and at the same time that uh, self-interest works better when we are expecting to be able to buy a piece of meat or some shoes? Well, according to Smith, um, the reason that we um, are nice to people is because um, uh, they appreciate it and, and we like to be liked by them. So we do the things that make them happy with us We try to avoid the things that make us make them angry with us or, or make them disappointed uh, in us. So to some extent, it is our self-interest which is driving this moral system. Uh, we want to be, we feel for other people. Uh, we feel their, their goodwill and their bad will. And we want to encourage their goodwill because that makes us, us feel better. So to some extent, it's exactly the same as it is in his economic ideas that, um, yes, it, it's centered around you. It's, you know, what is good for you? What, what do you want out of this, uh, out of an exchange, for example, with, with a, a shopkeeper? 
Um, so it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty similar. We, you know, we do things with other people morally because uh, we feel better doing that. And uh, we deal economically because that makes us better off too. What is the invisible hand? He, he proposed the idea that there is an invisible hand that guides the markets. What is that? It's really, today we would talk about evolution rather than uh, an, uh, an invisible hand. Uh, his idea was that um, by pursuing our own interests in the, in the marketplace, um, actually we create a system without intending to. We create a system which um, benefits us all. Uh, for example, he talks about uh, we trade with a butcher, a brewer, and a baker. Um, and both they and we have our, only our self-interest in, in mind. But what happens is that that produces a system in which we, we get our dinner. I mean, you look down any high street in the world, and it, they're full of cafes and restaurants and, and bars, uh, and those are provided by people in their own self-interest. They're not trying to create a, a perfect society in which we can walk out and, and instantly uh, get, our, get our dinner, but that's what uh, the system produces. So, this, so it, uh, he says it's as if we are led by an invisible hand to produce something which is mutually beneficial, benefits the whole society, but um, it's no part of our intentions. That's not what we were trying to do. We were trying to better ourselves, not better the whole of humanity. So uh, today we would say, well, you know, that's an, uh, an evolutionary system that, we, that we, we behave in ways that actually benefit the entire society. But Smith, of course, was writing 100 years before Darwin, so he didn't have evolutionary theory to help him. Mm -hmm. Some uh, some philosophers and politicians and economists claim uh, they claim that uh, uh, that the market system that was um, sort of uh, described by Adam Smith is basically unjust and it, that it isn't just because it, uh, it 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 actually has uh, consequences that lead to uh, a, a society uh, or a system of inequalities. What is your position? What is your opinion? No, Adam Smith, Adam Smith took exactly the opposite line. He believed in a free market economy. He believed in free trade because he thought that was actually the best way to help the working poor, that he thought that what kept the poor down was principally established business interests who go up to their friends in politics and get all sorts of rules and regulations in place to keep out the competition. So ordinary people can't get a look in. If, if you're not a member of the business elite and the political elite, um, then, then you're out. You, 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 you can't break through. And so his view was uh, that you should keep taxes to a minimum, you should keep regulation to a minimum, you should not allow businesses to use their political friends in order to keep out the competition. And then ordinary people are better able to use their own talents uh, to apply themselves in the best interests of themselves and, and their families and perhaps build businesses, you know, get work, build businesses, um, and uh, ex expand prosperity generally. So he thought that uh, markets benefit the poor more than anybody else. Uh, can uh, can self-interest actually lead to a better society? Yes, well, according to Smith, it does, That uh, because we found ways of, uh, if you like, capturing self-interest and making it work in to our benefit. Um, we we uh, work in the marketplace. We we buy buy and sell things, um, and that is a way in which we can cooperate with each other. I call, I go out and I buy things. The shopkeeper benefits, but so so do I. So we're collaborating with each other, cooperating with each other. Um, yes, there's a sort of competition. The shopkeeper wants the highest price and I want the lowest price. Uh, so there is that tension, but at the same time, we don't come to blows about it. We, 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 don't, uh, we, we don't call in an army and, and, and go to war about it. And it's exactly the same with commerce uh, domestically, and it's exactly the same with international trade, that uh, the more we uh, trade with each other, 
the less we're likely to go to war. It, it produces trade, uh, produces a, a harmonious society, a, a cooperative society, uh, and a peaceful society. What should the role of government be in, in this society, in this economy? Um, should it be a, a role of intervention? Should it be a, a laissez-faire attitude? What, 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 according to Adam Smith, should the government's role be? Well, his first uh, priorities for the government are defense and, and justice, uh, to protect us from enemies abroad, but also to protect us from thieves and enemies uh, at home. Uh, so those are, those are the, the the main things that he sees government as being there for, um, and those are actually quite large uh, operations. So you know this, this is not not a cheap um, <laughs> option. A government has to have a certain size, um, but he says that after that, what the government should be doing is to try to keep markets open, to to try to. Uh, pr provide some of the infrastructure which is necessary uh, for people to collaborate in the marketplace, uh, to make sure that there are rules on competition so that uh, uh, competition isn't, isn't closed off by particular interests who don't want it. Um, and otherwise, uh, really, government should be kept to a minimum because he thinks that uh, by going about their everyday business, uh, people actually produce an overall order, a society uh, which is um, far more beneficial than any bureaucrat or politician um, up in Mexico City or here in London or anywhere else. It's far, far better society is produced by this system of natural liberty that he calls it than could ever be produced by the mind of some uh, politician or bureaucrat. So, uh, so he, he's. He really thinks that government, there is an important role for government, but it is a limited role for government. And once you get beyond those limits, then all sorts of bad things start to happen. How did you first become interested in the figure of Adam Smith, uh, you know, a uh, 300-year-old philosopher? <laughs> <laughs> well, colleagues and I were starting the Adam Smith Institute. We, we had left Britain in the 1970s because it was going downhill very rapidly. And we all went abroad, and we uh, uh, we saw interesting ideas abroad that we thought we should re-import back into our home country, UK. And we were looking for a name for this organisation, and and we believed in choice and competition and markets. We 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 thought that worked better than the, the sort of socialism that we had in the UK. And so Adam Smith was a natural uh, person to, to take the name off because he believed in choice and competition and markets and, and low taxes and, and um, small government, uh, just as we did. Uh, some people claim that uh, Adam Smith is um, outdated, that, uh, uh, that a free market system is now totally irrelevant. What would you say to them? No, I think if you look around the world, um, uh, what we, we had since the 1920s, really, 70 years of, of uh, socialism and indeed communism in many areas. Um, and did it improve the lot of the world's poorest? Not really. For most of my life, roughly four-fifths of the world's population have lived in dollar-a-day poverty. What made the difference was, after the Berlin Wall fell, and various other reforms in the 1990s, um, countries like India and China and various others in East Asia, for example, um, uh, and Eastern Europe, came into the world trading system. And those countries started to become rich as a result. And the poorest in those countries started to be very much better off as a result. So now dollar a day poverty hardly exists at all. And in a few years, it, it, it won't exist. And it's the world trading system that's, that's produced that. Um, we, we make other countries rich by buying their stuff. And Adam Smith understood that. He, he, his view was, um, if you're a trader, you want rich customers. <laughs> so yes. If you're doing something that makes them better off, then that's that's the really good, really good thing to do, and so that's a very important point from from Adam Smith, and it's not remotely out of date. Indeed, it's 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 the latest thing. 
Well, Mr. Eamon Butler, a British economist, uh, founder and uh, CEO of the Adam Smith Institute of the United Kingdom, thank you very much for this conversation. Thank you for having me. Gracias. Y a usted, amigo, que al vernos y escucharnos hace posible este programa, se lo agradezco también. Esto es todo por hoy, pero no se lo olvide. Nos vemos la próxima.